you. They, you will not know what choir has done to me this morning. But as I go on with the short message I have, you will see what God has used them to do for me. I greet you all this morning, and I say welcome to church. I say welcome to church. I appreciate the leadership of the church for giving me this opportunity. And uh, church, I want you to join me as we worship the Lord. Just worship the Lord in any way you want. It's an opportunity for us to be in his presence. Worship him anyhow you want to worship him. Feel free. again to bless us this morning through your word. We know that it is your pleasure to prosper us both spiritually and materially. Lord, we pray that you bless us again today and make us blossom in your loving kindness. Cause us to be overcomers in all ways and in every way. I pray that you use me, Lord, to bless your people even as I humble myself in reverence to your word, Father, I pray that your name alone be glorified this morning. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Please take your seats. Brethren, something interesting happened. The GS said to me, prepare to take a message on Sunday. And because I had good notice. I prepared on time. I thought I had everything sorted out. I had a perspective fixed. I drew my outline. I felt good with myself when I looked at it again. Because I knew my weekend was going to be very busy. So on Saturday morning, I woke up very early. I said, let me look at the outline again so that I freshen myself up before Sunday. And I had a little
reading in my mind that that area you are going is good, but that is not my focus. God said, change the focus and tell them something different. And he told me what to say. Otherwise, I was coming here to talk about a simple topic this morning, money. And I had prepared it so beautifully. I pray that God will give us an opportunity. We will still take that message. But God said, no, that is not my focus for this morning. And who am I? That meant I had to radically change what I had in mind. So I'm going to speak on a topic today. How do we handle money in difficult times? How to handle money, the issues of money in difficult times. And choir, they sang that show me your face, oh Lord. I need you in my place. At a time like this, we need God. I was saying, God, since you are changing my message like this, just give me a confirmation. And the choir just came up and rendered that so well with some drama attached to it. And I said, Father, let your name alone be glorified. So they confirmed that I needed to change my approach. That was the confirmation I needed. Praise be to the Lord. Otherwise, I was to come here to give one or two passages and then I start breaking it into pieces and tell you how we can make money from it. But today, God said, no, take this dimension. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, like we have read and have severally, that this know also, which means other things had come before. For in the last days, perilous times shall come. Okay? What are perilous times? Perilous times are difficult times that we cannot handle. Times of hardship, times of pain. Let's keep that aside and look at something again. Jesus was doing his work and the disciples went to him and he told them, I will soon go. The world will face turbulence, very difficult times before my second coming. And the disciples called him aside and said, Master, what are the signs that we will see before these things happen? I'm talking of Matthew chapter 24, particularly from verse 7. And Jesus said that a lot of things will happen before I come. He said, there shall be famines. Matthew 24 from verse 7. He said, there shall be famines, there shall be pestilence, there shall be problems. And he said something, he said, in diverse places. There have always been famine in the Bible. But let me quickly tell us that the famines that took place in the Bible were the famines that were localized. They, were, they didn't cover the whole world. But before Jesus will come, he said there shall be famine which will cover the whole world. And we are talking of a time like this. The coronavirus virus, did it cover the whole world or not? Almost every nation of the world is in recession. UK just announced that from next year, all the citizens should prepare for excruciating tax. That the money they have spent this year, they will recover all by next year. So there will be hardship in UK. And Nigeria, as of last week, just declared that Nigeria officially that we are in recession. He said it shall happen in diverse places. Diverse places means it will happen concomitantly and in synchronism. It will happen together in very many places, in regions, in continents, everywhere. I said, remember that in earlier days, they were localized. But now, before Jesus will come, it will be global. So the question is, what should we be doing? And when we are talking about prosperity in a time like this, I'm also tell you that at times like this, times of famine and hardship in financial matters, please remain focused. Take not your focus away from God. What did I say? Oh, yes. 
we should not put our focus on the problems and the hardship because the problems mean nothing to us. They are not going to overwhelm us. Why am I sure that they will not come near us in this church and in the church of God? Why am I so sure? The Bible tells me in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 21b, part b of it, it says that all things are yours. All things are whose? But for all things to be mine and for all things to be yours, we must first of all be overcomers. Am I correct? So we need to learn how to handle issues of prosperity at times like this. We must not pursue prosperity and financial blessings to the detriment of our spiritual growth or outside of God. No. It's good to pursue prosperity. It's good to pursue financial blessings, but it must not be to the detriment of our service to God or outside of God. The reason for this is because economic hardship and problems will bow to us, not us bowing to them. We need to know that as children of the Most High God, we are God, little gods. And because we are God, we should not be the one bowing to hardship and problems. Problems and hardship should be bowing to us if we know what we are doing. Thank God we have a time like this to tell ourselves the truth about financial prosperity. In John 4:4, 4, 4, the Bible says, ye are, ye are of God, little children, and you have overcome the world. How have you overcome the world? He said, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You see why you must not bow to problems? No. Problems must bow to us. We will focus on one or two areas where I want us to talk about in times of economic hardship, what God says we should be doing. If I still have time, and I doubt I'm not going to have the time, I can tell you what I originally prepared, just snippets of it. But if I don't have the time, like I said, don't worry. There's always time. There's hope. Praise the Lord. The number one issue I want to tell us today, or the area where God wants us to put our focus is this. In times of hardship, God says, I should tell you to be faithful to his commandments. He said, do not allow circumstances to ruin your Christian habits and your Christian lifestyles. We should be faithful to what? To his commandments, even in times of hardship. Like I said, I wanted to come and talk about money, how to grab it. And I was loaded. But God said, no. Prepare the stage first. It's not about money. Money is a byproduct. They need to know that at times like this, difficult times are still coming. At times like this, they need to know what is my, what I am looking to see. One, the first thing is looking to see is that you remain faithful to his commandment. The Bible tells me in, in uh, Proverbs 28, 20, it says, a faithful man shall abound with blessings. A faithful man shall abound with blessings. That's what the Bible says. So when you are faithful, blessing is a byproduct of faithfulness. Praise the Lord. And then my Bible tells me again in Psalm 101 verse 6, God says, my eyes shall be on the faithful of the land. That is, when you have a land and the land is undergoing problem two more just times. He said, my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. And you know what it means for God's eye to be upon you? How can God's eye be upon you and problems will be threatening you? It's not possible. But he that neither sleep nor slumber is the one overlooking you. He said, my eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land. Praise the Lord. So, brethren, it pays to remain faithful to God even in our quest for financial breakthrough. In fact, faithfulness to God brings blessings, as we have said in Proverbs 28, verse 20. A faithful man shall abound in blessings. And I want, us, I want to ask us a question. Why can't we be like the remnants of the children of Israel that went to Prophet Jeremiah? They went to Prophet Jeremiah in Jeremiah 42, verse 6. The Bible says... They said to Jeremiah, whether it be for good or whether it be for evil, you seek the face of the Lord for what you wanted to seek the face of the Lord for. 
we will still obey the voice of the Lord. You didn't hear that. The remnants of the children of Israel went to prophet Jeremiah and wanted to seek something from God. But they told Jeremiah, while you are seeking, we want to assure you that whether it be for good or whether it be for evil, we will obey the voice of the Lord so that something will happen. He said, he said, to whom we send thee, that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord. Can you see that? God says we should remain faithful to him, whether he be good or he be evil. Please let us know that it is in difficult times that our obedience is tested. What did I say? That our obedience is tested. How am I so sure? In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7. Because when somebody says God has given me a message for you, God will give him the scriptures to back up the message. Otherwise I was coming to just read one or two scriptures and go. Because people accuse me that I, I turn messages to Bible study. That I give too many passages. But God cannot ask you to do something without take, giving you the scriptures to back it up. I said it is in time of hardship that God tests your obedience. In Hebrews chapter 5 verse 7, particularly verse 8, it was said of Jesus, though he were a son, yet learned him obedience in the things that he suffered. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience in the things that he suffered. It is through hardship that God knows who is obedient to him and is testing your obedience. Praise the Lord. At times like this, brethren, what should we be doing? We should set God before us, not set the problems we are seeing before us. What did I say? Let us learn to set God before us, not set the problems before us. It has become difficult to listen to God's voice again at times like this, especially when we are talking of financial things. Please, I beg of you, do not heed to devil's deception. There's so much of devil's deception. It affects me too, not only you, I don't think I'm talking to you as I'm preaching, I'm preaching to my, false to myself. Because I will be, I'll be stupid if I bless people and refuse to bless myself. Because God told me, Jesus Christ told me, he said, love thy neighbor as thyself. So the first person to be loved is who? It's myself. Uh -huh. So in difficult times, even me, I find it difficult to want to listen to anything about financial things. But it's a trick of the devil. A very trick of the devil. The pastor came out last week to say we have needs in the church. We will need some money. We appointed a coordinator. I thank God for all those who came. God bless you richly. And over the weekend on Friday, I was at a function and I got a lot. Bang, bang. Uh -uh, I was happy. Hey, money don't come. I don't get a lot. And I thought that was it. And I saw that that money, big money, I won't tell you the amount. And I, the money was almost enough for what we wanted, except for the fact that we want to now go to the media house to help them out. And I said, oh, this, is, this must be God. You see, that is the spirit. And I thank God for some members of this church who happen to be in my club. We have a club in this church. Don't be jealous, don't be envious. You can join. Membership is free. The only condition for membership is love of God. So you can see that anybody can join. And then there's a member of that, the first person that joined that club about 10, 15, 12 years ago in this church was an usher, a male usher. We said we needed to buy land for the church. We needed one, one million. And I saw this brother. He came out. I looked. I wiped my face to see whether I was saying well. He said, I'm going to give one million. Ha! Within a few days, he brought 400,000. Praise the Lord. And this brother was planning for his marriage. And he said to me, my marriage is coming. But I have promised God. I have this money. But I'm thinking of marriage. I said, no, no, no. Just do to God what you want to do. And he brought the remaining balance. 600. Ah, I wrote his name down. Big capital letter. Member of the club. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you the name of the club. So that if you want to join, join today. The club, the club is called 638. 638. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Give 
and it shall be given unto. So it's a giving club. If you want to join, join today. You are welcome. We will even make you chairman if you join today. Praise the Lord. So I got the money. And as I was coming to church today, I said, if I tell the GSA somebody paid money to the account, it will not be sweet. I had to call some of my friends in the bank. I said, I need cash. Let me go to church with you so that daddy will see that. I know they verbalize. Verbalize means to talk. This is action. And I gave it to the GS. And you could see that the, the man was happy. Do you know that good things make you happy? And I was happy when I got the alert. And daddy prayed for all those who have contributed. And for that person, prayed generally that God will enlarge their coast. And I echo that, that God will indeed enlarge their coast in Jesus' name. Because of my time, what are we talking about? We are saying that at times like this, it is difficult to hear God's voice, especially when it concerns our finances. And God says, I should tell you, do not heed to the deception of the devil. Set God in front of you. Not problems in front of you. That person, that brethren, caught the vision. How can you bail God out in terms of problem and you are in problem and God will not bail you out? Is that the God we serve? He said, he that honoreth me will I honor. He said, when you seek me early, you will find me. He said, have I called the son of Jacob to serve me in vain? That is our God. When you catch his secret, you begin to flow in financial abundance. But first, set God before you. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. Okay. In Psalm 16, verse 8 says, He said, I have said the Lord always before me. Psalm 16, verse 8. I have said the Lord always before me. And because of our time, let's quickly, let me drive my point home by taking us to Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22. And I will start from verse 21 to verse 25. Job 22, I will start from 21. The, my Bible tells me in Job chapter 22 verse 21 He said, acquaint now thyself with him And be at peace Thereby good shall come unto thee Acquaint now thyself Unto him And that is God, unto God He said, thereby good shall come unto thee Before you tell me, brother Joe We are talking about money, we are not talking about good Oh yes, good is money How do I know? My Bible tells me Jesus Christ told the disciples and the people who were listening in Matthew chapter 25, beginning from verse number 14. He said, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who was going on a journey to a far country. He said, this man called his personal aides, his disciples and his servants. And he said, he shared unto them his goods and proceeded unto the journey. Okay, we are talking about good now. How good can mean money? Verse 15. He said, he gave unto one five talents. He gave unto other two talents. Gave unto other two ta uh, one talent. He said, he gave unto them according to their various abilities. Verse 16. He said, the one that got five talents, invested the five talents and had extra five talents. Verse, verse what am I now? Verse 17. He said, the one that got two talents, invested, did likewise. Like the one that got five talents. And then we go to where I'm going. Verse 18. He said, but the one that got one talent, went to the earth, dug the earth, and hid the Lord's money. Check your Bible and tell me what you find there. He said, he went, dug the earth, and hid the Lord's money. So when we talk about good, money is the first part of it because it will answer all things. Praise the Lord. I say praise the Lord. Verse 22. We are back to Job, 20, Job 22 from verse 21. We are finished verse 21. Acquaint thyself with him and be at peace. Thereby, he said, and be at peace with him, thereby good shall come unto thee. And I've told you the meaning of that good. It involves money. Thereby money will be, begin to pursue you when you acquaint yourself unto God. Verse 22. He said, receive, I pray thee, his word. Receive, I pray thee, his word. And verse 23. He said, if thou return to the Almighty, thou shalt be built up. Verse 23. If thou return to the Almighty, Thou shalt be what? Built up. Verse 24. He said, Then shalt thou lay up gold as dust. The King James put it like this. Then shalt thou lay up gold like stones in the brooks. So you can call it like stones in the do as dust. Praise the Lord. 
And then verse 25. He said, yeah, the Almighty shall be that defense, and thou shalt have plenty of what? So, number one, you had goods. Number two, because you acquaint yourself with the Lord, goods are coming. Gold is coming like stones in the brooks. Then he says, silver is also coming plentifully. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Okay. So, please, let us note that in your time of hardship, be wary. Okay, before we get there, let me finish with the stones. You shall have them as stones of the brooks and pl silver plentifully. All of these things will pursue after you when you acquaint yourself with the Lord. Praise the Lord. And then let me quickly warn us that in times of hardship, we must not eat our last bread or our last seed. You can see that in 1 Kings chapter 17, the widow of Zarephath, who said to the man of God, I pray thee, let me and my son and my child eat this last bread and do what? And pay me. And the man said, no. Last bread is not meant to be eaten to die. Last bread is meant to be multiplied by sowing it as seed so that the seed will germinate and give you plentifully. Let us please take note of that. Praise the Lord. Number two, because of my time, I'm told I have just about five minutes left. Avoid to follow the world's philosophy or what economy says. Avoid to follow the world philosophy or what economies tell you. Thank God we know better these days. It happened in the days of old. It happened. But we thank God because the Bible tells us that the word of God was given through the inspiration of God. And it is profitable for our doctrine, for reproof, for teaching, for instruction, so that the man of God will be thoroughly furnished. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. So thank God that we know what we know now. Otherwise, we will run into the problem that our patriots ran into. Number one person that ran into the problem was Abraham. Abraham himself. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 10. Genesis chapter 12, verse 10. You don't need to read it. Just hear what happened there. The Bible says that Abraham went down to Egypt. Because it was happening in Egypt. And there was famine in his land. If you go down, if you go again to Genesis 26, from verse 1 to 2. Isaac knew that when there was famine, his father ran down to Egypt. So he said, said since there is another famine that was different from the famine that was in the land of Abraham, let me also go to where? Egypt. God seeing the intention of his heart and God being faithful to his covenant, which he had with Abraham, told Isaac, quickly stopped him. He intercepted him because he knew he was going to ruin himself in Egypt. God intercepted him and said, stay. Do not go to Egypt, remain in this land. And in this land, I will bring to pass the promises I, I had to, to your father. And indeed, the Bible tells us that in that same year, Abraham, uh, Isaac was very great and had plenty, more than sufficient of what he needed. Praise the Lord. So I'm saying, let us never be in a hurry to want to go to Egypt because we can never overcome in the flesh. It's not possible. It's not possible to overcome in the flesh. Second Corinthians chapter 10, verse 7. Admonishes us. Second Corinthians 10, 7 admonishing us, admonishes us not to look at things after their outward appearance. Warned us, never you look at things after their outward appearance. Praise the Lord. So, going to Egypt was the in thing then. Just like going to Canada, going to USA, going to UK is the in thing now. But please, brethren, don't go when God has not sent you. I don't know whether somebody is hearing me. If God has not sent you, don't do what? Don't go. Let us be on our feet. I want to show you why you must not go down to Egypt. And have you asked yourself, let's be on our feet, let's be on our feet. I'm rounding up. I'm a man under authority. I must keep to the time. Why we must not go to Egypt when God has not sent us? Because the Bible says Abraham went down to Egypt. Isaac was thinking of going down to Egypt. And God said, do not go down to Egypt. In the first instance, Egypt is not down. Egypt is up. But God specifically chose his word. Say, don't go down. So don't run to America. Don't run to Canada. Don't run to Russia. Don't run to anywhere outside Nigeria if God has not sent you. I will tell you why I said that. Please give me Isaiah chapter 30. We are going to look at 
verses 1 to 3 together. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 1 to 3. Quickly. I want it on the screen. Otherwise, I will continue. He said, Woe to rebellious children, said the Lord, that take counsel but not of me, and that cover with a covering but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. Verse 2. Quickly. That walk to go down into where again? And have not asked at my to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Verse 3. Therefore shall thy, the strength of Pharaoh be your shame and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. That is not our portion in Jesus' name. Quickly, give me, verse 30, give me chapter 31 verse 1. As if that was not strong enough. Can you see how strong it was? God said it again. Isaiah 31 verse 1. Quickly. He said the body... No. That's not it. Isaiah 31 verse 1. Good. He said, what to them that go down to Egypt for help? That go down again to where? Why is Egypt? Why is God always referring to going down when you are going to Egypt? When Egypt is up? It means you are going for problems. He said, what to them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong. He said, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel neither seek the Lord. Praise the Lord. God will help us. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Oh, Father, help me. Help me that I do not go down to Egypt if you have not sent me. I want money. I want silver. I want gold. I want prosperity. But we have been told that in setting you in front of us, by being faithful to you, that blessings will run after us. Acquaint yourself with the Lord so that it may be well with you. Blessings might come. So, my Lord and my God, I pray this morning that you help me. I will not miss it. Pray for yourself, oh, you will not miss it. You will not miss it. I need you to pray this prayer as if you mean it. Because I'm going to give you an example now that will make you be more serious and be more violent in your prayer. The example, the example is very simple. You know the story more than me, Elimelech. Elimelech led the land of Bethlehem and the land of Bethlehem is a land flowing with meat and with bread. Elimelech, a child of God like we are in church today, left Bethlehem and went to Moab, a land that is wasted. Moab is a land that is located in the east of the Dead Sea. That was where Elimelech went, a wasted land. A man left a land that is blessed of bread and meat and went to a wasted land. No wonder he was wasted. He was wasted. Sorrow in plentiful manner accomplished him. Be accompanied him because he went to where God has not sent him. That will not be a portion in the name of Jesus Christ. God says I should tell you that in your quest for financial prosperity, in your quest for greatness, in your quest to make it, set your focus on him. Be faithful to him. Acqu acquaint yourself with him. Seek his face that he's more than that to you. He will give you all things. He said money is just one of the things. He will add to it. That is it. That is it. Pray to God that he will do it for you. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you because you are a good God. And we know that you will bless us. Therefore, Lord, I pray. Let riches and prosperity pursue all your children and those that will hear my voice at any time concerning this message. That your name alone may be glorified. And that your people may be edified. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. God bless you.